body and to address you know serious respiratory conditions and so on so something as simple as a tan that you probably cook with and on a daily basis just knowing you're getting these benefits you know it's really good to know so I've been actually linking um, the discussion um, about these essential oils that I said before to the work of the great herbalist um, Nicholas Culpepper so who was Culpepper? That's really important because this, this person did quite a bit and it's good to know who he is. So, well, he was a famous astrologer and physician of the 17th century. And he published um, numerous unorthodox tech tracts that were condemned by the contemporary medical standards. And that is of importance to me because we see nowadays when people are trying to um, inform each other about other ways of healing apart from just drugs and chemicals and so on, you know, uh, man-made chemicals that other people come up, um, people are actually pushing this sort of more natural agenda. They, they, you know, can be found to be attacked for doing this. And here was Culpepper, an actual physician who actually chose an unorthodox method of treating his, his clients that he was also attacked in that day and age by the so-called contemporary medics. So the contemporary medics, they don't like this competition that they get from the herbalists, the homeopaths, the, and so on. They just don't like it. So it's not anything new. It's been happening for a long, long time now. So we're going to, um, to start by taking a look at dill. Dill as the herb and then dill as the essential oil and see what happens. And so we'll always start with, uh, with, with Culpepper just to see what he says and how he says it. I'm actually fascinated by the language of Culpepper. I qu I'm quite taken up with the, the old English. It, it just sounds quite beautiful, almost biblical really. So I quite like that. So um, Culpepper discovered that um, the ordinary dill herb it actually grows both in gardens and in the wild. And he, and he states that dill and fennel are very, very similar. And fennel is an oil I tend to use quite a bit. It's a really lovely oil um, as a tea as well. It's quite a nice tea. It has a quite um, distinctive odor as a tea. But um, it's a beautiful oil to use and so on. It's actually sort of gets rid of those sort of um, cellulite and, and things like that. So he was saying that um, the dill it, um, is very similar to the, to the fennel, with the dill being harder to handle, somewhat thicker, and a stronger, unpleasant scent. Some people do find fennel to have a quite a distinctive, maybe slightly unpleasant smell as well, but he's saying that dill is even more unpleasant. And um, with this particular oil, again, he says mercury has the dominance of this herb. And therefore, to, for sure, it strengthens the brain. In fact, um, since ancient times, dill seeds have been associated with magical healing powers. So the ancients really, really revered this particular herb they found out that the properties could do so much. And as you go through what the properties are and how they work, it will indeed seem quite magical. But of course, you know, um, it's not just magic, it's also science. So we, we'll look at that in a, in a minute. And um, it says here, Carl Pepper points out that dill, boiled and drank is good to ease both the swellings and pain. It also stays the belly and stomach from casting. The seed is more um, used than the leaves and more effectual to digest raw and viscous humors and to expel wind. So here he's talking about the whole digestive process that they will actually work with it really sort of helps the brain and, you know, um, with this sort of 
um, onset when people are getting older, getting Alzheimer's and dementia, even if you've had an accident or even an aneurysm or whatever, it's just good to know that the hidden oil that actually works with the brain, it's working with the digestive system, it's actually casting out pains and any bad humors from the system and so on. And he's saying that the seed is more potent than the actual leaves. But what I find impressive about, most impressive about dill, yes, is how Culpepper actually describes this particular property of the dill. He says that, he says dill dissolves um, the perfumes in the fundament and dries up uh, moist ulcers. He says dill also stays the, um, the hiccup. Now, ulcers are a tricky ones sometimes, especially if you think about ulcers that are, is actually in a damp area inside the body, at the stomach or something. And I mean, I've known people to have ulcers that last for years and years and years. It's just so difficult to heal, you know, and very traumatizing, very debilitating. And I wish I had known about this before because I have a family member who actually suffers with this. And I think I'm going to have to let that person know they can actually use this particular herb to actually dry up the, the, the ulcer that are sort of moist and staying moist for a long time. So, yes, that's the date. I wonder if Dr. Ebb is there with me, the, uh, the birthday girl. <laughs> yes, I, I am. <laughs> Yes. I am. I okay. am. Thank you. <laughs> the birthday girl you had earlier today, the birthday and Valentine's girl. Wow, all in one. Have you, ever used it, you know, no, I, I've never used that at all. Um, but the time I'm you know, I'm intrigued here as usual, taking down with my pen and paper. Mm -hmm. I mean, about all of the things that the time is able to do and we use a lot of time in our in our um, yes. in our food and um i was just mm -hmm. thinking it's just a mere seasoning but just listening to you i'm just realizing that these herbs that we're using in our kitchen are really medicine um for the most part not not really seasoning as we call them but they are very potent medicine I think um, I think we may just have dropped um, my sister there for a little bit. Hey, it's CRS Radio, Caribbean Radio Show. For all of you lovers out there, it is Valentine's Day. And, of course, you heard that is also my Earth Strong Day. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for the hundreds and hundreds of pouring out good wishes uh, on my book, on my Facebook. Thank you so much for all the love that you've been showing. I am just so overwhelmed. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Yes, my sister, I was saying before you go, I don't know if you heard me, that no. we 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 say these are seasoning, but I'm just realizing, just listening to you, that what we say are seasoning are, are potent, herb medicinal herbal stuff that we're taking and i mean this take have me take a different kind of look on my seasoning really different kind of look yeah because you know it says you know our, our food is our medicine um, that's what it is really isn't um, it? Um, our food is really our medicine so we really have to be careful what we put in our mouths and so on because it definitely makes a big difference to our lives and to our health and you know, this also said that ah, oh, the stomach is like the, the second brain because when you're putting things in your stomach, think about your brain. Would your brain really appreciate this? Would your would your liver actually like it? It's always sometimes we're eating what we call mouth eating, it's eating just for the taste that we have in our mouth and stuff like that. But um, we have to consider this on a more deeper level what exactly these things are that we're putting in our bodies because if something goes in and the body doesn't recognize it as food, the body is so kind, it will store it as fat. So many times um, we're eating all these lovely sweet things and, you know, etc., and not realizing that junk food and so on is not recognized by the body 
as actual food. Food, yeah. So the What's herbs, it? the herbs are so potent, and uh -huh. the Bible as well it speaks of the herbs being, you know, so important for healing. And the herbs have a very high vibration, you know. And sometimes that is what you need to actually do is to basically use those herbs to start the healing process. But Dr. F, are you aware that sometimes when people are sick, they're told not to have fruits? Yes, yes, so, yes. And when yes. I tell people that, they get really kind of upset, especially if they're kind of like a fruit area. And I say, but yes. When you're not very well and you're trying to heal, what you really need to do is to recognize that the fruit and the, the fruit sugar, the fructose, uh -huh. and help to slow the process down absolutely so what you want to be doing is heading for the herbs and the vegetables and so on so it's so much out there to learn and to share and um um you know we're going to try and continue now to see what we can actually um you know what, what you know what 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 i was thinking um i, I I'm, I'm just full join my earth day and i slow down a little bit and um, since your show, you know, a lot of things that have changed when it comes, my place is just full of oils and it, I just have today my lemon oil on um, as my little fragrance of smell. And yeah. what, what, what I just realized is that when we have our earth break and we have this special occasion and we said we're treating ourselves just slow mm -hmm. down folks and really realize what you're doing this special occasion this milestone and you're treating yourself for the the 90 percent of the time 99 percent of us to poison ourselves mm -hmm. we get out there and everything that we take as treating ourselves is literally poison for this particular special occasion isn't that kind of a backward though isn't that backwards? No, when, when I say that we should never have a treat or whatever, because you but know, but what is a um, treat? Why would you know that <laughs> something is is poisonous and you take that as a treat? Why don't you say yes, I am yes. going to? Uh, okay, I've passed my bar exam today, or today is my big big anniversary, and I'm so glad to have crossed that milestone. Let me go and take some poison and really celebrate with some poison okay is yeah. that what isn't that what we're saying, saying so well. yeah but that's what but you say when you say oh it's okay to take a little treat once in a while that's what you're really telling me though go take a little poison i, know, I, know. <laughs> I, think, I think i think i think if we're eating healthily all the time the body's not uh, like a fighting fit state. It can actually, you know, push these things back out fairly easily. The problem we're having is that you now we're living in a time when we're dealing with these sort of GMO foods, you know, genetically modified um, organisms and so on. And yeah. the body's overloaded with, um, you know, external pollutants and so on. The, the, the soil is devitalized. So we're not eating the best quality food anyways. And then we're dealing with all this industrialized pollution. We're really on the attack, and then to have a little sweet treat is just like adding salt to the wound. Really. Ah, thank but when you. we were younger, having these things, and you know, when with a different time when the food was really food, those things didn't really harm us. We ate it, we enjoyed it, we didn't do it too often, it was fine. So, I guess we have to redefine and really yes. look at what we're living in now, yes. you know. Yes, and yes, and and, and I'm so I, I I'm so very happy though that in lieu of cakes and all of those stuff, we have the fruit. Um, we have here. I don't know if it's in the UK. Um, the, mm -hmm. the there is a um, I forgot what you call it now, but you can get a fruit cake. Um, with just fruits, yes. you get a, just fruits. Um, okay. so, and you can get a fruit bouquet. Rather than flowers, right. they do the bouquet with fruits. So I mean that right. that is saying that somebody's really thinking in 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 the direction of health. Right, right. I mean we can still go out and eat and enjoy our um, vegetables and you know organic meats and so on. And you said probably just have instead of having ice cream that is made from cow's milk or something, you know go for something that is far more nutritious, maybe a yogurt based type of dessert with fruit or whatever in it that's more healthy and so on so 
I think it comes with awareness and constant awareness and by actually listening and talking and sharing. Yes. We're able to sort of reprogram the mind because it does take time to, to change one's behavior. If you have a particular um, set way of behaving, it takes a few few weeks, 21 days or more to change that behavior. So hopefully what we're doing here today is by sharing, we're helping each other to kind of like just become more conscious each time, each and every time, you know? Mm -hmm. So really, really um, important, so critical. But this is why I, also, I actually like to do the research on these things because whereas I always tend to use certain oils like the fennel and so on, I've never actually used dill. And dill is not very expensive, one of the more mm -hmm. sort of affordable oils. So therefore, it's something I need to go out and try it for myself. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you find as well, the more popular oils that you're using them, and you're getting some results, but there are some particular health challenges you, you might particularly have uh, that's just not shifting. Mm -hmm. And then you go for something different to what you always use. Just take a switch to something like dill, and suddenly you get a breakthrough, you know, health-wise. So this is why it's so critical and so important to be able to look at the different oils, see what they're doing, and see how we can actually help ourselves and help each other. So, so very important. Now, just want to actually, you know, just want to see exactly why the ancients found this deal so magical. Why was it so, you know, so fascinating to them? So what happens is that you have, we can look at the essential oil of deal and see what's going on here. So deal is derived from by steam distillation. And it distilled the dried seeds as well as the, the entire plant is actually distilled. And the basic components of dill are um, carvon, dilapinol, eugenol, limonene, terpenine, and maris maristicine. And from these components, you then get the properties. And one of the first ones we're going to look at is the a property which is antispasmodic. So dill is an antispasmodic. And what they will do is actually have this relaxing effect on the muscle. It will re relax your nerves as well, your intestines, your respiratory system. It will quickly, very quickly pacify the spasmodic sort of attacks and bring this sort of really well-calmed relief. I might think to yourself, but it's just a spasm. Why is a spasm so, so important, you know? But to be, to be honest, a spasm can be quite fatal. If you can imagine somebody coughing, coughing, coughing nonstop, that's not a good, good way to actually be, you know? It's very irritating. So if you have this spasm, it can really irritate. It, it can be really fatal as well. And, you know, if you have spasm, it can have this sort of unwanted contractions, maybe in the abdomen even in the respiratory tract, the muscles, the intestines, even the nerves as well. So we don't want to be having a condition where we're living with this constant spasm and so on. And in the spasm themselves can also cause things like, as I said, nonstop coughing, nonstop um, hiccups. I mean, some people have hiccups and it lasts not just a few minutes. It lasts for days and even years. Can you imagine living like that? Mm. Cramps muscle pulls, convulsions, or even an epileptic attack. And I saw a friend recently who actually had a hiccup um, two days prior and was still having this hiccup and going yes. on. And I said to him, I didn't know what the deal at the time, but I actually knew the method that I could use to, to stop the, the hiccup. So I said to him, if you have a hiccup, what you need to do is to really try to shock the diaphragm back into place. Mm -hmm. So I said to him, go up the, the, the air quickly, hold it for a long time, blow it out hard. Mm -hmm. And by doing that a few times, the sharp intake quickly, hold it as long as possible, but not too, too long, and blowing out hard, you find that, that will shock the, uh, the diaphragm back into place and will begin to relieve the hiccups. And I watched him do it for a while, and he, you know, it actually worked. By the time he, you know, he, he walked up and left the library, it had stopped. And two days before, he was just going on and on and on. He was just so frustrated. So, but it's nice to know that there's a deal as well, because if it's happening to somebody who's too young to do that, or too old or too weak, the deal can actually help with that. Now, I'm particularly interested in the um, epileptic at attacks that deal can help with. And I remember in primary school, somebody actually had that attack. And it's quite difficult when you're looking on, isn't it, Doctor? Yes, very scary. 
like, like a seizure. It's really shocking. I, you don't know what to do. You're told not to touch them. You're told to hold them. You're told so many different things at you. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you ever know that. I, I think at the time, the child, I, saw, I saw them actually whip up the person's it, shoe. And put it and in put the face. Absolutely. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, did you know about that one? Oh, yeah. You, yeah, because they take a pull their breath in it is um when i was in um ecuador um just going to ecuador also because of the height the sea level and we're below sea level you just you just fall on the street like fly you just see people who just come into the 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 country fall on the street like fly literally literally because the air is so thin and you can't breathe it and when you mm. fall they just grab you they just they're just so good at doing this they just just grab you um grab your shoes off and just throw it on there so you get to that that stench um kind of uh, <laughs> just that, yes that yes that shock your body yeah. back into it but in jamaica right, what we right. used to I, do I mean, tell me have i've learned as well um is you know just between your thumb and your index finger that's sort of fleshy bit mm -hmm. if somebody is convulsing and shaking if you quickly press um, that flesh should be very hard and very sharp oh it will shock the body back into place and send the finger back to the brain to and cause the seizure to kind of like stop I, shaking did, and stop to stop. I did not know that really i just want to so you know as i'm doing research on different things I'm listening to different things, and that was something that I, I found out recently that, you know, so yeah, people are shaking and convulsing because it's like a, 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 the, the electrical pathway between the brain and it's the body absolutely. is interrupting. And by, that flesh should be between the thumb and the index. If you're pressing it suddenly and very sharp and quite painfully, yeah. and just shock it back. It's just place, like giving it a, almost an uppercut chop in the... In, in between there, yeah. You're using, you're using the thumb and the index from the other hand. Yes, yes. Press in uh -huh. quite sharp, like, like, uh -huh. a, like a pinch, like a sharp uh -huh. pinch. And also and that, with that the work as well. so, and also with the convulsion, what we used to do because when they're convulsing and getting this epileptic seizure, they will chew yes. and eat their tongue because you're chopping up yes. and you're chopping. And it's good too if you have a spoon or something to stick in the mouth between the upper and the lower teeth area. Um, that yes. will prevent them from eating because you literally can chew up your tongue. Or chop it yes, up yes, by going yes, up and down. Um, yes. Stress, yes. I think the advice I give here now is that if somebody's having that kind of shock, you're not supposed to touch them. But I don't know if that's really the best thing to do. Uh, you know, and so so confused. They keep changing what you should or what you shouldn't do, and it's wow. all very very confusing. Um. So this this deal, this fabulous deal, is also a disinfectant, Doctor Ev. It kills the microbe that cause food to spoil. Uh huh. And when con they will actually eliminate microbial infection in the colon, in the, in the, the colon tract, in the, in the kidneys, and even the genitals as well. So you can also apply this um, diluted essential oil of, of dill on the skin to protect the skin and wounds from infections. Uh -huh. and it also helps wounds to heal quickly. It can also be applied to the scalp to protect mm -hmm. the hair from various infections and even light. No, when you come on to light, that's something else that made my skin just grow. <laughs> and um, over here, I think, I, it, it, we're in Jamaica, I never really saw much light, or heard of much light in Jamaica. You, know, you had an odd person, you know, with very, very long hair that would probably get it and so on. But um, over here, I mean, it's just crazy. and. Be in the classroom as well, you know. You think yeah. yourself, oh dear God. But I tell you what, um, apparently life doesn't like to live in your hair. Your hair is quite oily. Absolutely. You can't really grasp onto the um the hair and and, and the scalp because the hair is um the scalp is quite oily. Yes. And you know we have as Jamaican people, you know, your hair get washed and oil. <laughs> and and here comes the hair oil <laughs> all over the scalp, ba all over babe. the <laughs> And, and we continue that tradition when we come to these countries to still continue to moisturize our hair even more so because the air is so dry. I know where you are, probably you have soft water like Jamaica, but over here it's very, very hard water. 
So even more so, you tend to want to use the oils on your hair to protect it from breaking and so on. And I even remember a lecturer was saying to me when she goes to the class, she always put her hair up in a bun. And I said, wait, why are you doing that? And, you know, she goes, no, if her hair comes down and touch somebody's head and they have light, yeah, she'll get yeah, it straight yeah. away. So, you know, when she was out of the class, she wear her hair all the way down to her back. But once she got in the class, uh -huh. it was all wrapped up. She wasn't taking any chances, taking no prisoners, you know? <laughs> so, um, yes, and I remember that uh, when my son was here as a baby and apparently they said um, light was going around and my son had really thick, long hair. Mm -hmm. And I used to always use essential oils on him, like mandarin and so on. I put in his hair, his skin, everything. But I still worried that he would, he would get light and have to shave his head, you know? We never got it. Um, but the, most, you know, most of our hair, the lights don't really linger on the, the kind of more African hair. It's more in the straighter hair that they... Oh, I realize, we, yeah. just, we can't get it, but I realize... No, also, certainly not, it, but, certainly not. But that we always tend to moisturize the hair, the, the light doesn't like the moisture. Absolutely. That doesn't, that, that helps repel it as well. So sometimes I know like, you know, pe people that are, are, are European here, they wash their hair, they don't moisturize their hair. So the, the scalp is quite crisp and sharp. So it's easy for the light to, to jump on and stick in. Mm -hmm. Very opportunistic. And people tend to think light is linked to dirty hair, but that's not, that's not true. No. It likes, it likes clean hair mm -hmm. and clean hair that is not oily. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe if they were to use more oil in their hair, they wouldn't have that problem so much. But just saying. So the, the dill is good for things like that. Dill is also what's called a vulnerary. So what that means is that it actually promotes quick healing of wounds, either external or internal wounds, and protecting them from um, infections. So, you know, again, with all of them, those kind of things and on the inside, that are kind of, you know, moist and so on. Dill is good for healing things like that. And you know, people suffer from that bed sore. Yeah, that's another problem, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's another problem, and so on. So the deal again, you you know, you could apply it around. And for those who are new to aromatherapy, it's always important to dilute the essential oil in a good quality base oil, mm -hmm. preferably one of these cold pressed and unrefined. Mm -hmm. Do stay away from the canola oils and the rapeseed oils. Even some of the olive oils nowadays are not even true olive oils. Yes. You know? Yes. Just the kids with that. So you're going to go for the coconut oil, the avocado oils, and, and make sure it's cold pressed and unrefined. Then you're probably be, you know, much safer with that, that concept. So, yeah, so, and that's what Zil can do there in terms of, you know, help with bed sores and ulcers, helping to, to heal and just apply it around the area. Sometimes you can't put these oils directly on something, you put it around it. And the oil will actually target what needs to be targeted. It's very intelligent. And where the herbs are strong and important and powerful, the essential oils are very, very concentrated. So they need to be treated with respect, you know. I like to call them little gods in a bottle. So this is also good for constipation and it will help to alleviate colic as well. Now, it is actually um, a galactogon, which just like the fennel, it will actually increase the formation of milk in the breast. That oh. is so, so important. Oh. And it will not only increase the, um, the quantity, it will also increase the quality of wow. the breast milk, you know? Wow. And yes, it's so good for that, just like the fennel. And, you know, there's so many young mothers or mothers that are nursing who sometimes really struggle with breastfeeding. And the baby so needs that first, um, flow, the, the colostrum, isn't it? Yes. So that, that, that colostrum is full of the probiotics that go into the baby's gut and, and furnish and, and occupy the, the baby's intestines. This is why babies that are breastfed and get that first milk are less likely to have allergies when they're old and all those kind of things. So, you know, some mothers, they really do struggle, they feel guilty, etc., etc. So much pain. This is a wonderful um, herb that you can use to bring that flow of milk and increase the quality of the milk. And the good thing is because dill is actually good for colic. So when the mom is actually breastfeeding mm. and if she uses on her body, then the baby will get the benefits of the dill as well. So and breastfed babies can sometimes tend to be a bit more colicky than the one that our bottle bottle said, you know. 
can be more flatulent and colic, and therefore if the mothers are using the gill, they'll get that to the breast milk, and that will help with the colic and so on as well. But I find sometimes Dr. Ed, um, when I observe some mothers um, burping their babies, mm -hmm. I'm just thinking, what do they do? And then they pat, pat, pat on the back. I don't think that's, that can't move anything. Well, I we I, I saw somebody you 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 we we do um you press the I mean put a little pressure on your arm and do a clockwise thing, not tap the baby's back. That that is okay, for okay, choking. I, I don't. That's uh, what I learned. I've had people. I've, I've taken people. I said, hold on, let me have that baby one second. So that baby can start wind or something or wriggly. Yeah. Said, look, look at me now. I said, take the baby, hold it, put the baby's um tell me right in your shoulder uh -huh, yeah uh -huh. and just kind of like, touch on the shoulder and then cut it properly and it, it was burping burping i said that's all the way that's trapped for how many days and weeks that's the baby hurting the baby you know absolutely and, and when the yeah, baby gets a little bit annoyed you know that is the wind that is trapped oh, there the spies, i mean the thing is wind is very painful very it's Sticks on your nerves and cuts into you. It can really, really hurt. And the poor little baby is just. And when you, when you pat the baby back quite strongly, the baby actually loves it. Because there is It does. The wind out, you know, and this little. As we pat, 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 they can rub, rub, rub. And yes. Thinking, that can't move anything. <laughs> you know, so it's good to know that the, the seal is there. And I think um, it wouldn't be unwise to probably put probably a little one drop of dill in some oil and massage your baby. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've what what we problem. what we used to do when the, we find that the you know the baby and we know when the baby is fussy because of gas we get a little mm -hmm. warm uh, coconut oil warm it you know uh, a, yes. above room temperature you know that it won't really mm -hmm. scorch the skin and then at the navel um, we do yes. a clockwise massage yes. clockwise massage. Yes. Yes, I, I, I had to once um, do that for my friend's baby, got to Jamaica and the baby was in um, the, uh, the hospital, can't even breathe, wow. couldn't breathe, and then I had to nebulize her, took her home, um, back to the mom's place, and I said, baby needs a massage, so I did what's called a boil flush. Okay. Like about two, you know, there's a boil flush on her, where you actually drain um, the, 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 the colon, colon going down first, right. then across. Mm -hmm. oh, and I, I did it quite a few times with the arm. Um, the, the, the base oil, round and round, in a clockwise direction. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. What a child passed was yes. bigger than her, than her head. Bigger <laughs> and blacker than her head. It was unbelievable. But um, so these are really important. There's a massage is so important, you know. This touch for health, you know, the health yes. in your hand is yes. so very, yes. very important that people actually um, do this. But just remind the listeners, in, uh, you can call in on 661 467 Two four zero seven, and you're listening to the CRS Radio, the Caribbean Radio Show, and you're listening to Dr. Eva and Marjorie Henry Lawrence. Today we're talking about the the oils, the ancient um, view of the oils via cold pepper, and the more modern day look at it as well. And we're looking at dill at the moment, this magical oil. Now dill is also what you call a um, stomatic, so it keeps the stomach healthy. And it also regulates um, the secretion of digestive juice and bile in it. It keeps it safe from infections. It helps to heal ulcers or wounds therein. Dill is also a carminative. So in doing so, it also helps to remove gas from the intestines. And it will stop more gas from forming and lead to its downward expulsion, you know? You know, sometimes we can't eat properly because of this gas. I, I spoke about gas lifting somebody's heart, didn't I, one, one week. Lifting the heart and mimicking a heart attack. So it's not something to, to play with this gas. It's so important to move it along. Um, there is also a sudorific. So a sudorific, it will actually make you sweat. You bring about sweating. And with that sweating, you're actually removing any excess salt. It can also sort of, you know, remove any excess water or toxin. So people don't like to sweat, but sweat is really a normal bodily reaction. If you're sweating abnormally, then that's not good. But I do wonder about people that don't really show any sort of visible sweating. But we all sweat anyway because there's always the invisible and the visible sweat. But 
a good sweat where you can actually have to wipe your face. It's good. Mm -hmm. it's very healing. It's very detoxifying, you know, and just remove that sort of um, excess burden of the, of the body as well. Um, being a sudorific as well is also, you know, can actually reduce the blood pressure and wow. reduce swelling and protect the, the overall health of the skin. It's a sedative. This is also a sedative. And the sedative action of the on the nerves and the brain is profound. Again, the brain, we need to protect our brain. We need our brain for a long time. Don't be getting up into age. The body is fit and strong, but the brain is gone. That's, that's not good. So it protects the brain. It would make a person feel relaxed, free from anxiety and tension, even anger and depression. You know, we're brought down and bring down that, that high blood pressure, due hypertension. I would promote a good night's sleep. So it's not just love and that's doing the arm, the sleep thing here. This will also help a good night's sleep. Wow. There's a word of warning, a precaution when using dill. So dill is appropriate if you're a nursing mother, but if you're pregnant, you're not supposed to use it. So, you know, with all these oils, you get these precautions and so on. So that's just a precaution for dill, actually. So. There's no, there's no doubt as to why dill was seen as a magical herb, you know? Wow. There's these few properties, but they're so important, aren't they? So poignant, so very, very fundamental. Um, but we still have some time. We're, you know, or 15 minutes or so. Dr. Ed, what's coming up next? Uh, uh, the show. Uh, oh, our next. wonderful, um, the midnight hour, Burr Blue. Um, he's going to be, he, he, he was going to be coming up, but I just got him a message this second that he's having some technical problem at his location so probably i'll sit in for him so you get a little chance yes. to chat a little bit there with some great music coming up on the yes. six o'clock hour okay well we'll, we'll see how it gets on if he gets um get it sorted maybe he'll come and, 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 jo and join us or get his show going so yes i'm um, looking at his up now now his up is known as um, Hisopus officinalis, and anything that says officinalis is really usually quite important. And it comes from the Labiate family, and the Hebrews called it um, Isob. I hope I said it correctly, it, um, Isob, from which the name Hisop is derived, and they're holding it quite sacred, this Hisop. Wow. Um, hypocrites use it, um, this sort of herb to treat um, pleurisy. The principal constituents of hyssop are um, hyssopine, saponine, silica, potassium nitrate, tannin, calandrine, pinocanthine, um, thujone, limonene, and geraniol. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I want to actually spend some time looking at these particular um, constituents another time, you know. I want to actually explore these actual um, properties because these are so important to understand and what they actually mean, what they actually do, and so on. So I'm going to actually try and create a show for that. Now, because the, um, the hyssop has this thing called pinocanphone, it can actually cause epilepsy. Mm. It can trigger epilepsy. But so people that are actually prone to epilepsy should either use this very small quantities or just completely avoid it. And this is why it's so important to know what the constituents are because by when you can see the constituent, you can say, oh, that's so and so, that's not for me, or whatever. Now, let us find out um, what Culpepper has to say about um, Hesop. He said that Hesop strengthens all parts of the body under the planetary influence of Jupiter and Cancer. And again, I'm just so fascinated by this planetary influence on the body. There's a whole other area to explore at some point, you know. And so, hyssop is good for coughs, shortness of breath, wheezing, and rheumatic distillations upon the lungs. When you take it with something called oxymel, it purges gross humors from by stool. Taken with honey, it kills worms in the body. Mm. It amends and cherishes the, na um, the native color of the body spoiled by yellow jaundice. Mm. If you boil it with wine, it will heal inflammation and take away the blue and black marks that come by strokes, bruises, or falls if applied with warm water. 
It is excellent for swelling in the throat to wash or gargle. So you, you wash or gargle with it, it's really good for that swelling in the throat. Um, the head anointed, it kills lice and takes away the itching. Mm -hmm. It expectorates tough phlegm and is effective in all cold griefs or disease of the chest and lungs when, when taken in a syrup. And it goes on and on and on about hyssop because, of course, it's officinalis, you know, like rosemary, not officinalis, as it's rosemary, and it just goes on and on and on. I'm quite interested in thing about the swelling in the throat because I had an experience with that last, this last year after dental treatment. And, um, I, you know, I've had to have tests on my throat and, allerg and tests of allergies and so on, and nothing came up like you're not allergic to anything. Well, maybe I'm allergic, allergic to work or something, I don't know. <laughs> the office, maybe I am, I don't know. But it, it's quite frustrating when you go for tests and nothing comes up really, you know? True, true. So I'm doing the research for this. I think, wow, this is fantastic. Here's something I can actually use to address this on and off feeling of my throat feeling a bit swollen, you know? And it's just really good to kind of encourage people to go out and try these oils, to explore them. And in fact, just to remind people that if you're interested in buying these oils, you can go on my arm um, on the website and pick up um, these oils via the web link, which is uk.nyrorganic, one word, dot com, slash shop, slash Marjorie Henry hyphen Lauren. So yes, go there and get your oils there or go to a very good quality kind of health food store and get some good quality oils and do try that. So, so very important. But um, again, with his up, have you tried his up, Dr. Have you tried his up? No, well, no that I was just about, I'm glad you mentioned that. Talk to us about yes. the his up and, and what does it look like? Okay, I have to see if I can find the exact um, description, but I don't have it on me right right now. But um, let us see, because let's see, cold pepper is at hand. I don't know. I'll see in a minute. But I could find out for next week if I need to find out for next week exactly this, the actual description. Do you think you know it? No. Is that why you're asking? You think maybe you I, I, I was... it? I, 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 I hear the name, so I'm sure I know it, but maybe by a different. Yes. Um, By a different, different name. name. Okay, that's in, that's interesting because um, I I haven't used hip hop either, and I think well, there's no doubt in my mind I'm definitely going to be using it because it's you not know, for my throat and so on. I see how I get on. But when I try to, so I can actually locate the description for you. So give me one second here. This is why it's so good to um to see. So what do you think it would be good for? I mean, it says it brings back all these things, the color to the face. Have you ever cooked with it? You think maybe cooked with it or just you've seen it going in the wild or something? I, I as I, I said, know. I would have to remember. I can't remember too much, but well, I know well, I'm very says, familiar. I found it for you, doctor. It says here it's a common, here's a, it grows about a foot high. Uh, it has many stalks, which are square at first, but grow round as, as they come to flower. The leaves hmm. are long, narrow, and sharp pointed and ah. set two at a two at a joint the flowers grow in long spikes made up in thin walls um it has like blue leaves large blue leaves disposed on on, on one side of the stalk i'm thinking of, of, i'm thinking kind of, of something complex sounding kind of sound isn't it yes it has a libia divided into four segments. The seeds are black, growing four together in the arm calyx. The root is thick, woody, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. much divided. Mm -hmm. And the whole plant is uh, has a pretty strong aromatic smell. Wow. There's something else I want to try and get into as well, because you need to actually recognize herbs when you see them, you know, and, and so on. Because sometimes we live in the city and you grow up in the city, you kind of lose touch with what is out there, you know, and we shouldn't actually say, oh, that herb is that, that is edible, that is not, but most of the can't really do that, you know, and I think we'll probably all need to, including myself, of course, we need to learn to do that and, and so on for our own health and our own well-being. Absolutely. So on the modern day, take of, yes, yes, definitely. So on the modern day, take off hyssop, 
Um, when we don't actually want to use something internally, we can then turn to the essential oils and use it externally in a massage or a bath or you know, in a steam or something. Now, hyssop is said to be an expectorant, again, mm -hmm. to help with the asthma. So you see the link with the old and the new at some point. It's, so it's, uh, it would have asthma, it would have with hay fever, if you have difficulty in breathing, chronic bronchitis, cough, and influenza. It's said to have anti-cancer properties as well. Mm. So it use it with kind of like malignant con uh, conditions. It's a vermifuge, so it will actually rid the body of uh, intestinal parasites and other properties. It's also similar to dill. It's a sudorific, which means again that it would you know, induce that sweating and the sweating of course would help to remove the excess salts, the excess toxins, and bring down the pressures, etc. etc. It's a stomachic, so it's good for the stomach and good for the digestive system, antiseptic, it will kill the microbes just like there is a deal. It's an hypertensive, so it will help to normalize the blood pressure. Use it for eczema, cancerous growth, wounds, bruises, scanty periods, eruptive fevers, rheumatism, loss of appetite, dermatosis, and this one, Dr. F, mm -hmm. tuberculosis. Wow. Tuberculosis has been mentioned in the news quite a bit nowadays. It's making a little comeback, you know? Yes. And that's not really good. We don't want that around at all, this tuberculosis. But sometimes with the overuse of antibiotics, over these years, we're not even quite sure if they can tackle it. Well, well, of course. Um, well, of course, we know that the overuse of the antibiotic make antibiotic almost um, totally um, of no use. Yes. The majority of yes. us, so um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we are in and trouble. I know we really have to go back to nature. You know, back to nature, back to God, back to nature, because. Um, these things, these herbs and stuff, they are holistic. They have all the things and all the properties, all the constituents in, the, in, the, in this right format that we can access. And that's a good thing. But the only thing is that if they're making the soil devitalized, they're dropping chemtrails on the soil and poisoning the, the soil, they're changing the structure of these plants as well. So we really need to start growing our own plants, you know? Oh, absolutely. And, and, and sort of... Um, Maybe protesting and saying enough is enough. We don't want you to poison our, our soil and to poison us anymore. You know, we don't want things that are modified genetically anymore because it's not good for our bodies. It makes us very sick. And this is how they make their money. You know, you go to the doctor and they don't make you completely well. They make you just keep you alive and pick it so you keep coming back to buy your drugs and so on. That's not acceptable. We want to be, our, our default mode should be health. And we want to be healthy. You know, it's not just a case of. Or you have, you know, your genetics um, basically determine how you're going to be. They don't have to express. You may have the gene for asthma, but it doesn't have to be expressed. You know, with correct diet and, and lifestyle and, and nutrients and so on, that it can just stay as you have a gene, etc. So basically, you know, it's good to know if you have this hyssop that can actually counteract this tuberculosis. Because we need some stuff like this around to keep us healthy. Yes, definitely. I know the time is going, Dr. Ev, and um, we have just about four minutes left and whatever. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually continue um, next week with uh, looking at myrrh and chamomile and look again at, at what cold pepper is saying and compare it to the modern day sort of use so they can see how it, they interlink and how they over, overlap and so on. So, yes, definitely. So, um, Dr. Ed, anything to say towards the end of the show? Wow. One thing I can say. Oh, no, you know, I just love having you on the show. So, you know. <laughs> and this. Just, just this is. So oh, wow. Wow. But let me tell you something. When I'm not on, I'm here with my book and I'm taking in every single word that you say. And we are so, so, so grateful for this, I mean, I mean, the herbs and stuff that you are really taking to the classroom. I call this this big global classroom. Yes. And um, we thank yes. you so much. There's so much. I, I get, right now I'm on to the nutmeg and, um, and of course my cinnamon. I mean, my, my food is packed with I, I, nutmeg I, I, and I cinnamon. You don't have more oil than I do, Doctor. You have every single oil. I am. <laughs> you have, you have, you have come and see you. Oil. You, have more than me. Uh, you turn me 
on to this. You've been doing a great thing. And of course, um, for those folks listening in, um, I'm tending to have because of um, and, and I don't know where this get on and I, and I know you just have a couple of minutes the lemon juice for me is helping me so much the, a big nice glass of concentrated lemon juice just cut my blood sugar down like I mean it it, it yes. is just absolutely amazing i have my apple cider vinegar that i do in the morning too as well but mm -hmm. i'm kind of, i just lay off of that little bit now i'm just doing a lot of my um lemon juice nice concentrated fresh lemon juice or lime juice and it is well, amazing well, right, lemon is actually one of the big healers you know absolutely yeah, the top healers and lemon is, is right up there yeah my mother's so, so never been so out of a lemon at all she always have a lime in her bag a green lime would you say which is good for <laughs> which is good for a lot of things to cast off anything i don't, I don't, I don't buy lemon i tend to buy lime lime yes lime. that's I think, it i feel like the limes are more potent than the lemon i, I do think too and so on but at the same family they're very very close i just see the lines taste just a little bit nicer uh-huh more citric it has a little bit more the citric acid is although the lime has a more aroma the, the lemon has a little bit more aroma to it and more yeah. uh, some you know it has a little different but i prefer my lime and i'm yeah, telling you, you me definitely. Uh, my lime for yeah, me the lime oil if you try the lime oil if you try the lemon it's oil you know the lime is just kicking it's just sharp and fresh and yes it's just right out there you know so, and that's my deodorant and, and oil to buy, not too expensive and so that's my use. and that's my deodorant too my lime that's the only yes. deodorant i use my fresh it's lime juice lime, it was um coconut oil you know and that make it as nice so it doesn't, it doesn't burn you it's too sharp you can use the coconut oil so it just goes on uh, that's, the what, arms and that's what i do that's what mm -hmm. i do amazing very fragrant very refreshing very healing so beautiful you know definitely but um yeah it's been so nice talking to dr ed and um i keep telling you don't be a stranger you know <laughs> this is your <laughs> your your domain and i'm sure in, in it and i'm humbled and honored to be here with you um as often as i can i try to be here each and every week but i'm not i i do miss it but um i'm just loving it i so appreciate the the opportunity i've given to me oh. and i just love sharing this information with um the audience and with you as well wow thank you thank you Glad to share yeah, my very happy birthday again. Thank you know, you. go back and enjoy yourself. Or no, you're gonna be working. Work. I'm gonna you're be working. Work. Work. <laughs> so yes, yes, you're gonna be working on your birthday. So do enjoy that and just thank the listeners for, for listening and I'll be back next week. Thank you so much. Thank you for using Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye.